Imagine a city in space, not a cramped space station, but a sprawling metropolis with millions of residents, complete with suburbs, forests, and lakes. In the 1970s, this wasn't science fiction. It was a serious NASA proposal that came closer to reality than you might think. Meet Dr. Gerard O'Neill, a Princeton physics professor who helped create the technology behind the Large Hadron Collider. But in 1969, watching Apollo 11 land on the moon, he had a revolutionary idea. The 1970s were a time of crisis. The oil embargo, environmental collapse, and a best-selling book called The Limits to Growth warned that Earth was running out of resources. O'Neill asked, what if we moved our problems into space? Starting as a thought experiment with his students, O'Neill developed a radical solution, massive space colonies that could house millions of people and solve Earth's environmental crisis. O'Neill proposed three designs. Island One, a rotating sphere nearly a mile around, home to thousands of people living in the equatorial region. The Stanford Taurus, a massive wheel-shaped station supporting 10,000 residents with mirrors reflecting sunlight to create Earth-like conditions. But his masterpiece was Island Three, twin cylinders, each 20 miles long and four miles wide. These would rotate to create artificial gravity and house several million people in an area larger than many small countries. Inside, strips of land alternated with massive windows. Mirrors would open and close to simulate day and night. This wasn't just survival, it was designed to be paradise. The materials would come from the moon. A mass driver, a space cannon, would launch lunar rock to construction sites at gravitational balance points between Earth and Moon. Today, private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are slashing launch costs. NASA is returning to the Moon with the Gateway Station. 3D printing in space is becoming a reality. O'Neill's vision might have been 50 years too early, but the technology is finally catching up. Small-scale space settlements could happen within decades. The scale of Island 3 remains beyond us, but O'Neill's fundamental insight that space can be a place for ordinary people to live, not just visit, is more relevant than ever. As we face climate change and resource depletion, O'Neill's 50-year-old question remains urgent. Could humanity's future lie not on other planets, but in cities among the stars? What do you think? Are space colonies humanity's destiny or impossible dreams?